Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Brain Scratch Commentaries playthrough of Resident Evil 2. And uh, in the original Resident Evil, there was a big ass plant monster called Plant 42. In the, Resident, in the Resident Evil 2 version that we got back in the day, there was also a big ass plant monster that was glorified background imagery. Uh, Plant 43? Yes! Wait, yeah, really? That's actually his name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I plan, hate video games. It, 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 it's Plan 43, and here it is. And it's not just background imagery here, although it doesn't really fight you as a boss either. You have to kill Plan 43 by, by synthesizing a vaccine. Not a vaccine. You do have to synthesize a vaccine in a lot of Resident Evil games, but here you have to synthesize a herbicide. Uh, which you see, I feel like a lot of video games get this wrong because a vaccine and a cure are not the same thing. Yes, if you I know. Take the vaccine when you're when you're si already sick. It's not going to do jack for you. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it would preventative. Yeah, for vaccines preventative. It wouldn't hurt, but it wouldn't really do much. It wouldn't either. do anything. You know. Yeah, yeah your 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 system already has the virus to work on to, to create antibodies mm -hmm. for. Uh, yeah, if, I'm surprised they didn't call the herbicide in this game Vigil. They should just on the full nine yards with the reference. <laughs> yeah. Well, in any case, you need to synthesize the herbicide, which in this case involves a bit of a runaround. Oh yeah, plant monsters are hanging around, and they won't necessarily wake up. They're like zombies in that sense, but, you know, fuck up. <laughs> you can kill them ahead of time. I sure showed that, dickhead. Just are like there plant zombies? What? They're not... They can, like, walk and stuff? That's... I... They're humanoid plant mutants, uh, but here's the thing, okay? If they catch you, you are dead. Uh, if they catch you and you don't have a defensive item, you can't. Uh, uh, well, not necessarily. But... No, they're they're they just really they're hurt. instant kill. They split their heads open and they're instant kill. Uh, oh yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking of a different one where they poison you. Uh, the one that poisons you is the monster in the sewers. Yeah. It sprays you with a. This is what I was talking about when I said the arc shot. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Down it goes. Burn it. Pleasure. Okay, it doesn't linger. And it's dead. It dies. Yeah, it's dead. I said it's, it's dead. dead. Now it's dead. <laughs> you can tell when it's dead because it will actually become a blackened husk without any divines. Like that. It the, the the flames roar up into this one last and then and then you get like a a blackened charred uh, husk that will not ever bother you again. But as long as it remains with the vines all wiggling and stuff, it will eventually get back up. And yeah, it is basically this game's regenerators in a way. Only I'd say a little more terrifying, if only because again if they manage to. Well, grab you them. say that, but the pale heads and ghost survivors basically are regenerators. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I have not played the Ghost Survivors DLC uh, the, at the time of this recording. The, the, um, well, DLC is a free update, so... The Mayor's Daughter... Uh, the, each cha each of the three chapters has its own unique enemy, and the Mayor's Daughter has to deal with tail heads, which are these mutant, white-skinned things that look like they walked out of Resident Evil Revelation. And uh, they regenerate damage extremely quickly, so the only way to do, to do significant harm on them is, is to hit with weapons that do a lot of damage. The quickest way to kill them is a headshot with a magnum, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're a pain in the ass to deal with. <laughs> and they make the creepiest goddamn sounds, and I'm glad they were included in this game. And I wish they would, like, include, like, a Master Quest version of the main campaign that included, like, pale heads and stuff. That would, that would be great. Anyway, yeah, uh, we start this side quest here, which I guess sprays the plant with water so that it can empty this little bottle here. And once the bottle is empty, we take the bottle, and we have to use that bottle to make the herbicide. The herbicide has several steps to it. First, you need to uh, find the codes to unlock the uh, machine that, 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 that contains the chemical itself. Then you need to run that chemical down to the, to the low temperature room. And put it in, an, and put it inside uh, a very impressive Resident Evil 2 reference in order to cool it down. And this uh, whole game is a Resident Evil 2 reference. Though. You, you'll get what I mean when we get there. <laughs> you'll get what I mean when we get there. It's it's basically it's basically a moment that's that's there to to, 
to make the player say, oh, I remember that happening in the original game. Gee, that was a Well, I won't game. get it because I never played that, so I don't remember it was that like, happening. It was, like, G it, was like, it was like one of those moments in the original game where it was like, gee, that was impressive in PS1 graphics. But, uh... And also, wow, this is taking a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it makes more sense as something that happens in this game, though. I mean, like, why did you need to go into a refrigerator for a goddamn case? Uh, why are they stored in this weird-ass mechanical arm machine? He's dead. Yep. God He's damn not, it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it falls right back into the flames. Good. That's what I like to see. Yeah. Um, E thing, two. Lego block, two level. <laughs> Lego block, two lines, two L's, Lego block. There you go. Just screenshot it. Yeah. That's what I did. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what I did the first time, but no, I've, I'm used I'm, I'm used to doing these doing these symbol puzzles now, so I remember what the symbols look like. Are those randomized too? No. Yes. No, they aren't. They there's are. an A scenario no, there's, set. No, they, yes. There's an A scenario set no. and a B scenario set. Is there a scenario set? There's, there's, okay, there's, there's, there's a scenario set, B scenario set for each character. So there's four different combinations. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. Cause, yeah, all right. I wasn't thinking of a other thing. Oh, randomized. so there's four sets. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I've only actually played through the game in its entirety as Claire Alien B so far. I mean, I've played the first police station section as both characters just for the hell of it because getting through the police station and snagging all three of the of the medallions to get to open the uh, to open the um, the statue secret exit and then fighting Birkin at the end is like going through Green Hill Zone for me. It's very fun. Solve the puzzle. UMB number 21. Yeah, you see the reference is there. It's also mm. P Epsilon, which is the uh, the gas the gas P spray. Echo fighter. P epsilon was the was <laughs> P epsilon was the gas that you would sprinkle in in the original RA2 to weaken the plant monsters. You see. So, uh, if you're the reason they didn't reference V jolt is because they were too busy rep, rep, referencing that other chemical from that other game. No, they only they didn't reference it because the dude making it got caught up in math. He was terrible at it. <laughs> uh I mean, it does give you the first two of the combinations, so you could brute force it if you really wanted to. Yeah. I mean, why would you want to? You need to go down to the area where you would get this com the, the completed combination anyway, because that's the cool, that's the low temperature yeah. um, experiment. But you could fill it up. You could fill it up first before going down and kind of do it all in one go. This is the point where the plant monsters would be waking up if I hadn't killed them ahead of time. Yeah. See, so I, did you kill them ahead of time on your first playthrough or No, no, I didn't know no? that I didn't know that the, I didn't notice them hanging from the ceiling. Is the thing. I, I didn't know the plant monsters were here. I had heard before I got to this point, oh they took out the plant monster. No, they fucking didn't. They just redesigned them. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Oopsie doodle. I'd rather have these plant monsters than the, the ones in the original anyway. The other ones in the original were not scary. At all, and a non-threat to it. Oh team. yeah, mechanically they were a non-threat as well. It's like even when they've been souped up to become poison enemies. Well, when has a poison enemy in Resident Evil ever been dangerous? Uh, not ever. <laughs> so, yeah. the spiders missing from the sewers is even less of a, a, a of a thing to complain about because the spiders were in like two hallways, and like they were always on the ceiling, so you could just run past them. Sure they we also didn't fit in with the, with the game at all. They drop acid on you, yeah, but you literally have to be standing still for like five seconds for that shit to hit you. And oh, what's that? They're running along the wall trying to hit you? The hallways are too wide for that. Just run to the other side. It's, it's, it's like... No one cared about the spiders in Resi 2 until the remake excluded them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And we've already seen what giant spiders would look like if they were more realistic. The game is called Resident Evil. It's on the GameCube. There's a remaster on HD consoles. Not to mention, I always felt like the giant spiders were always kind of like the line where Resident Evil crosses from 
from scary to goofy. Well, you know, we still not... we still have a giant alligator. Um, that's still in here. Is it a mutant alligator? No, it's just a giant alligator. It, well, okay, well then. Well, I mean, it's it's obviously mutated from the experiment. The, the, it, it, they did go to trouble to make it look a little less alligator-like and a little more monster-like in this game. But it's yeah, uh, it's and, also and they like, basically admitted they only put it in just kind of, kind of as a joke. They they kept it in for Leon because it's the kind of crazy ass shenanigans he would get into in Resi Four all the time. <laughs> so it's like, hey, yeah, this is the character you know from Resi Four. Uh, yeah, it's it's literally one small sequence. It doesn't affect the game at all, really. Yeah, it's also consistent with Resi One. Like that's what the T virus does to reptiles. It makes them fucking huge. <laughs> Um. I missed that my first time through. I didn't even look into the back of this room for anything. Yeah. I mean, it's not a like lot of people did that. It's not like you need a map for the, for the lab area. It's not very complicated. No, you're going through most of the rooms anyway. Yeah. Can't anyway. go to the server room yet. Yeah. Anyway, this is the the part where the power being down in certain areas is uh, uh, a mechanic. Unlike the police station, you can light up all the areas in the lab, and it's so nice. Yeah, this room sucks, so... <laughs> yeah, because eventually... Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if they're already here. The liquors. Well, no, the liquors only show yeah. up after you go to a certain point, so kill the zombies here first. Yeah. I think the liquors will appear, like, the first time you pass through here on the B scenario, though. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think they're already here. Well, th there are not already here exactly but they always burst in through the ceiling <laughs> which is something that happened in the original game but when liquors burst in through the ceiling in the original game they would sit there and wait for you to make a move so that they were they knew you were there and <laughs> this one whenever they burst through the ceiling they know you're there so the only way to, to to reset them so that they're blind to your presence is to leave the room and come back you're not killing the zombies Someone thinks highly of themselves. I'm not killing them because I don't have to worry about the liquors yet. Oh, also, because they haven't woken up. Hi. Grenade. Grenade. Launcher. That works. Oh, for fuck's sake. Did you guys just. That one's foot on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I heard a hot feet, but. <laughs> That's better. It's, it sounds like this where you kind of wish like the grenade launcher was like the old one where it had spread. Yeah. Well, uh, the one that had spread was the explosive round. Um, it would fire like three rounds off at once and they would all explode. A very video gamey weapon, but I didn't care. Yeah. Uh, I kind of miss that the old uh, Resi 3 grenade launcher which had like four fucking ammo types. Uh, like, there was the explosive one, the flame one, the acid one. Ice. Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh. oh, what is this sensation? That would have worked if the second Ow. liquor hadn't already been there. You get off. Okay, camera. <laughs> okay, uh. Nothing. Thankfully, it's the head and not the, the thing's asshole. Oh, you got lucky there. Right out of the air. Oh. Okay. okay. Out of the frying pan. <laughs> Into the fire. Literally. It was my own fire. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Ooh. Heal! Oh. Nope, you're... No, no, he's yeah. still got no defensive Flash Headshot. <laughs> no, I think no. that was a grenade. No, that was a flashbang, you're right. I had to waste a blue... I had to waste a blue herb, you son of a bitch. Oh, damn it. Come on. Die! <laughs> It's like, it's like it noticed you loading a grenade like uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's dead. Whew. Always double tap. That logic applies to zombies, not liquors. Uh excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Any sort of bioweapon. No, well, you don't know if the extra bullets would actually make it stronger until uh until it turns into like William Birkin point five or something. You also don't know if it being on the floor makes it any less, many more vulnerable. So I would say it wouldn't hurt. 
Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, the thing we need to turn the power on is, like, right in the next room. Yeah, after, but there are zombies, though, so be careful. After you deal with the goddamn liquors. But, because, of course. I like how you tell him to be careful as if he didn't already record this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's more to the audience who are playing along. <laughs> do people do that still? Like, play along with a... Occasionally. With an LP? Occasionally. They occasionally do, yeah. The longer ones, especially, like, RPGs. Nah, I can't play along with them. Let's play our commentary because I'm already like probably hours ahead of them. <laughs> well, at least they're scheduling. Anyway. I don't. Yeah, I don't have the restraint to only play like well, it de it de twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think people will do it more often when the let's play is already complete. Yeah. Because I know people did that with uh, nine and six for us. Nine and six. What? Final Fantasy. Okay, well, All you right. can't just say the, the numbers 9 and 6 and have people assume what game you're talking about. How, how many... I'm, so, I'm sorry, you sound like the Hedgehog 6. <laughs> well, there's Mega Man. We've done through Mega Man mm. 6 and 9. That's true. There's a lot of games. Sometimes people will just shout Sonic out a number, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so, uh, Sonic 6, that would be... If we're counting three and knuckles, it's one game. Dude. No, it's as not. You it's as two. You should. It's one game. <laughs> no, it's, it's it comes on two goddamn cartridges. It costs yeah, twice as much. It costs twice as much. It's two games. All right, it's not one. Not game. on Mega Collection. Not on Mega. On Mega Collection, it doesn't even come standard. You have to unlock it by playing Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles twenty times each. All right, they're two. They're two games. He's okay? not wrong. He's not wrong. That's a uh, that's a really annoying thing about Mega. Mega Collection. Sonic 3 and Knuckles are sold as one separate entity on Steam. That's yeah, true. so they sell Final Fantasy X and X2 as a single entity now. That doesn't make well, those, those are, two one game. That's X right. and X2. Well, well, that's, that's still that's still a Oh, no. That's a horrible uh, when, when, uh, when, when you buy X and X2, you're buying a bundle that registers as two different games on your library. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is a single ROM. Yes. It's two games, goddammit. No, they're okay. one game. They come on. They came out on two. It is such an epic adventure, though. Yeah, it if you, if games. okay, if it was like a <laughs> if it was like a game where it came on two discs, fine. Like I wouldn't be complaining because games do that. I all mean, the it kind of does if you separate the cartridges. No, but I mean, that here's my point: is that they were released on they were released on in on separate days with separate price tags. It's not like Final Fantasy VII. You bought disc one and you had to wait a year to play disc two. Okay. No, you just you got had to remake. You just had to wait a, had to wait a decade wait a until they for, made the prequel. Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, the Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic Three. Oh God! Were six wait, months apart. no. Resin, Final Fantasy yeah, VII months. is going to be episodic when they remake it. When they remake it, uh, if they remake it. I was, I was, so I was yeah, saying, there are like, two, there are two games, and just because you like playing both of no, them back to back, there's no substance. The only difference between playing Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles back to back and playing them put together is Hypersonic, who is dumb. So, it is very clear, though, that the games were meant to be one entity. That doesn't, that it doesn't really matter. Designed. It's very clear that Resident Evil Four was meant to be in a spooky mansion. That's not the game we got. Intention no, you're doesn't matter. You're confusing the. You're you're confusing not entirely you're, you're not execution. entirely right, Ted. Uh, when you combine some of the games, some awkward level elements that they threw into the level design to make the game harder toward the end just vanish, and the game has a much gentler difficulty curve up through S and K. It's a. Uh, a little bit magical. Actually. They're one game. No, they're not one game. They come on different, goddamn cartridges. They no. use all the same sprite work, though. So, Resident Evil 2 reuses how much Resident Evil 1 bullshit. That Not much, really. actually. Mario, much. Super Mario The Lost Levels uses so, a, a lot of the same Mario 1 yeah, stuff. But, That's not too... That doesn't but make we it... we all call that a glorified ROM hack. It's still... Yes, but it's still a different game. You're wrong about Resi 2. Uh, Resi 2 actually doesn't reuse anything. Okay, well then Resi 2 and Resi 3, whatever. I was trying so, to be Re relevant. Re Resi 2 game. and Resi 3, yeah, would, would, would be a good comparison. Yeah. Uh... But that they're not been one. Said, just because you like playing them both together doesn't mean that that makes them one game. All right. I mean, level data is in Sonic Three for Sonic and Knuckles levels. So yeah. So there's and level data versa. for there's there's leftover data for all sorts of games that would what, later be used. The, on the, the, in not sequels. in the case of Sonic. No. Like Sonic in 3 Sonic and Three and Knuckles, <laughs> if you access the level select in Sonic Three, you get like the. 
complete list. Yes, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that they're they're suddenly the same game. They're two different games. But the intention is clear. Del developer intention just... doesn't mean jack shit. Okay, it, uh, it does not. No, game, it, I think it no. Does. It okay. Listen, listen, Resident listen, Evil listen. Two remake number puzzle. <laughs> okay, no. Listen, this is this is. No, I would not be silent. No, because first off, we tangent all the time, and second off, this is important because people say that just because the author or the developer or whatever said something that that means it's set in stone. That's not true because the author can in fact be wrong about their own work, and that might sound like some pretentious English class bullshit, and it is. But it's, it's important, because you get stuff like, for example, uh, Tolkien. He said that his works were not written as a allegory to World War II, but if you look at it, it very clearly is. And just because it's One. not intentionally put World War I, whatever, same thing. <laughs> um, besides the point, the, basically, j the people who determine what the text means are the people who are reading the text. Once it's out there, the author can't say anything, which is part of why people, I mean, we already had this discussion, probably already in this commentary, about J.K. Rowling and people getting mad at her about saying random bullshit after the fact on Twitter, because it, it's like, no, that's not in the, the actual books, you know, you're just making stuff up, that's not... The problem no. people have with Rowling is different than that, though. The problem people have with Rowling is that she says she she, she talks, talks a big game about, like, Dumbledore and Grindelwald being gay and whatever, and doesn't have the the, the the courage to actually do that do anything. In, in the story itself, you know? Yeah, that's but that's so what it, I mean, because just because the author says that, yeah, that, that's, oh, that's, were... that's 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 a different that's a different problem though, is is what well, I'm that's, getting at. So what the point is is that yes, while stuff in Sonic and Knuckles was intended to be Sonic three, was intended to be in Sonic Three, and yes, the idea that Sonic Three would originally be as big in scope as it would be if you were to put Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3 the, together, and the fact is that true. Sonic and Knuckles only came out six months after 3 so, did. The but, the fact okay, that Ted, Ted, but that doesn't make them the same goddamn game! Ted, they come Ted, on two different cartridges! Ted, Ted, here's Lord the of thing. the Rings is not one movie, it's three movies! It they is were shot at the same time, Ted, but they're three movies! Ted, God Ted, damn it. Ted, counterpoint. The only reason <laughs> Sonic and Knuckles had a lock-on mechanic in the first place was because they made it using the rest of what they planned for Sonic 3 with the intention yeah. that you would lock those two games together and play them as one. Yeah. Yeah, the meaning that they had to cartridge. release meaning that they had to release a second game in order to do yes, that. It's a, not Yeah, because yeah, of the and you know, if it were of the Ted, if it Ted, yes. do you know what they call that in the year 2019? DLC. In a, in a, DLC. <laughs> 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 you know, I rest it's my still, fucking it's case. Two, <laughs> it's two different games because it it's is, not. You and can it play because you can't. Here's Ted. my counterpoint to that because you can't play DLC separately Ted, it, from the main game. Oh, you oh, you say if that? I, buy, I have a uh, counterpoint to that. Play, is he gonna play Chronicles too? <laughs> that's that's one exception. You can't. <laughs> but there are but there are exceptions. Infamous there's there's Festival exception of Blood. to every rule. Infamous Infamous you can't play Blood. Octo Expansion Splatoon without owning Splatoon two. You can't play. Oh god, you can't play Ghost Survivors without Resident Evil 2. You can't Infamous. play Infamous Festival of Blood. Infamous First Light. New Super Luigi what? U. New Super <laughs> Luigi Look, how many Okay, you're going to <laughs> If you're going to name Okay, so next you're going to tell me that you can play just Joker in Smash Brothers. None of the other characters. You can what? play just Joker. You can if you just don't touch any of the other characters. <laughs> no, but they're still in the I mean, game. I mean, you can play Sonic and Knuckles separately. You can play Sonic 3 okay, separately. Okay, okay. Therefore, they're I, two separate I games. I get what you're saying, and you're both right. And you guys are wrong because you're goddamn Sonic fanboys, and you're y stupid. You're both right <laughs> and wrong is all I'm saying. No. No, I'm not. The <laughs> situation was awkward because they pioneered something that would become commonplace many, many not, years no, later. No, not, not really. The other thing, though, is lucky. that you, don't really ha you didn't really have the option of creating two cartridge games the way you did. Yeah, yeah. So they couldn't make it one game. They had to split it up awkwardly. Yeah, but you know, Se Sega, Se yet. Sega would do similar things later. Like Shining Force Three comes in three scenarios that are connected through save data imports and are meant to be experienced as one long game. Of course, we in America kind of only got the first one. 
Uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not so much oops. They just didn't think it would sell well over here, so they made the first one, rewrote the ending so that it sounded like an ending, and uh, and stopped it there. <sighs> also, Sonic 3 and Knuckles isn't as good to play as playing them individually anyway, because it goes on for I, like three I, okay, I disagree. Well, that's an entirely different it's topic. Worse. I, I disagree it's worse, because I, I disagree because like playing Sonic and Knuckles on its own is fucking awkward. You get like four levels where you can get the Chaos Emerald. And three is anticlimactic as shit. Y- yes, well, but no, yeah, but say... then if I play them both together, I feel like I'm wasting my time for the last hour. I'd say so, I, I really you know. like three's final boss though, and wish it was in Sonic Three and Knuckles, and which. You can indeed well, Sonic Three it. complete. It is Sonic, a Knuckles Sonic, the Sonic Three complete uh, ROM mod. Oh, okay, if you're talking about ROM hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, pl- uh, that that's the definitive way to play S3 and K right now. Uh, you mean Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles? So- Sonic Three complete is a mod of Sonic Three and Sonic oh, and Knuckles. Oh, so- Sonic complete. It's, 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 AKA it was not released complete. No, AKA dude, it was dude, released as dude, two separate games. Let me talk. You're talking about a ROM let hack. Let me talk. The Sonic Three and complete mod c- includes. Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and a custom version of Sonic 3 and Knuckles that adds in the Sonic 3 things, and also lets you like uh, pick which soundtrack you want to listen to while you play, or uh, all sorts of other options. There's too many options, way too many options, <laughs> for me to remember them all. It's actually a, it's actually a really impressive ROM hack. <laughs> yes, it, is. it also, oh, it lets you switch the level order around so that you're playing it in the intended order that was indicated by the Sonic 3 level select. So Mushroom Hill is Mushroom Valley and Flying Battery is like after um after Carnival Night, I think. And, okay, that's neat. And then you but like it doesn't make it one game. And then you like you bust out the <laughs> uh, you bust out the uh the door from Flying Battery at the end and snowboard down the down the hill on it. They kind of reused that yeah. idea on Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> uh it was uh it's an interesting mod and I recommend checking it out. Wow! Of all the of all the games for us to go on into an in-depth Sonic tangent, it would be Resident Evil Two remake. One. No, I'm well, not be surprised. Fair. We're going through a we're, we're going through a pretty boring like backtrack. Yeah, this, and this also segment. you guys are wrong. So I'm got mad about it. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. This is this is this you're is a wrong. slight. You're wrong. <laughs> Your mom's wrong. Oh, uh, I win. So it out. Oh, yes, you probably would think that they're separate games. Too. I this, prefer Sonic Two and Knuckles. We can play Knuckles and Sonic Two. Oh fuck that! <laughs> this is this is this is slightly yeah this is slightly tedious backtracking but you know I think it's less tedious in the B scenario though because you actually have the okay yeah uh, well okay more more ac- what I meant to say more accurately not very interesting to commentate over yeah fair enough I think it's uh, I think you know? it's uh, a little bit more streamlined in the B scenario because you get the uh, cryptographic sequence or battery thing uh, at the very beginning next to Ghost's corpse so. You can just wait. Like, why does a wristband take up a spot on our inventory when we can just wear it on our wrist? I have no idea. It just does. Here's a fun thing. Resident an evil is dumb. Here's a fun thing. Leon will have the wristband in the cutscene at the end of his campaign, even if you stuff the wristband into the item box. <laughs> he has this dramatic moment on the train where he tosses it off the side because he's remembering Ada, and uh, yeah. Uh, so okay, so I've been wondering this all game. The the Jill Wesker and Chris guns. I know that's DLC. Are they any better than the normal gun? You I start out think with? they are, but they also can't be upgraded, so you don't get the upgrade benefits like an increased ammo capacity or anything. So better in terms of base firepower, I think, but worse in the long run of the game. So they're really just there because the Samurai Edge handgun is such an iconic part of Resident Evil. So there, there is a there is a standard model um, um, Samurai Edge that you can unlock in the game itself. By the way, so the Jill, Chris, and Wesker models are just DLC variants to that gun. And they so that's something you'd use before you find the upgrades, and then not after. Then yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use them like at the start of the game if you're feeling like you want an easier time at the start. But like once you have Matilda's stock. And Fire three round bursts with it, and once you have the, the 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 Browning high power with its own ammo capacity increase, uh, basically the the Samurai Edge weapons, at least these three, the DLC ones, fall out of favor, at least in my eyes. Although they are the coolest looking handguns in the game by virtue of looking like your your standard Berettas from uh, the original Resident Evil, so you know 